Well, I've got a whole bunch of stuff here from Pomona, which they've sent me. I guess it, basically, I sent them a little shopping list and said I'd like these things to review, and they sent them to me. So, very much Pomona. So, none of these things cost me anything. So, these are free for the purpose of review, to be clear on that. I'm going to go through and have a look at some of these things and uh, see what we think of them. So, I think we'll look at the most basic thing first. Over here, we've got some BNC cables. Now, I actually asked for two of each thing because I like to have twos, apart from this, because I didn't need two of them. Um, BNC cables, asked a couple of them, asked a couple of these cables, asked a couple of these, also asked a couple of these things. But these are slightly different, obviously. So let's actually open one of these up and actually have a close look at the cable, see what we think of it. So this BNC cable is a 2249Y48, which is a RG223U based coax. And basically, it's a longer cable, right? This is four feet, as in 48 inches. It's what 48 means, it's 48 inches. And I needed a couple of longer cables because the other ones I've got are all like one meter long. And when I've been working on stuff on my bench here, sometimes I want to plug this into the front and then plug this cable up into my test gear on my shelving here. And sometimes a bit of a tight reach. So I wanted one just a slightly longer. You don't want to have too much length, you don't want to waste a lot of cable. And the shorter the cable is, the less losses and issues you get from the cabling. So I just wanted one which is slightly longer. <laughs> so that's exactly what I've got here. All right, and see. You can see the labelling on here. Get it twisted around. South, south wire. There's the model number there, RG2C4U, 19AWG, 75 degrees C rated. And yep, Pomona branded plugs. Nice strain relief on there. That'll work nicely. It's obviously coaxial. But what can actually say about a BNC cable, there's not much you can say about it on front of review. It's like, well, okay, if this is what it is, and I mean, strain release are important, that's quite nice. You don't end up cracking the uh, certainly coaxial cable or anything. I wonder if there's any tests I can do. The only thing that comes to mind is like using a VNA and actually like hooking it up and checking for losses and reflections and things like that, and cable errors basically by sticking a dummy load on the one end of it, you know, 50 ohm load hook up the other end to the VNA and like do a single port mode or something and see what it does. I don't have a VNA. Hmm. Yeah, so without a VNA, I can't really do much to test this. I was thinking you know, maybe I could come up with something, but no, I don't really think I can do any actual tests of the cable apart from physical tests like this. Yeah, well, it, it's PNC cable. I think the most I can do probably is put an overlay up with uh, a chart showing the characteristics of the carex. Yeah. The next cable we've got is the 136A36, which means it's 36 inches long. Let's get into it. Now I asked for these because I've already got a bunch of cables with this kind of connector on both ends, right? Really good cables, just plug them in, 19mm spacing or 3 quarter inch, whatever you want to call it, and off you go. Just plug it in, done. Nice and easy. But some instruments don't have consistent spacing. Like an example would be this, this flute multimeter here. It's okay if you're using these two ports, just plug the cable straight in. But if you want to use one of these, like the 400 milliamp one, for example, you need to plug from here to here. Well, you can't do that with these fixed spacings, can you? And this is just one example of, you know, the, of a situation where you maybe you would use it. You probably wouldn't use it for 10 amp range because the cables probably can't take that. In fact, I should really check what the specs are on these things. 300 volt max, um, something about voltage ratings on the packaging, nothing about current ratings, but it's probably got it somewhere. I'll have to look it up. Maybe I'll put a chart or something for it, maybe, if I find one. But it's just one example where just, the spacings are not 19 mil apart. I mean, there's been lots of situations where this is the case. Another example is on, say, some of my test gear. Um, some of the spacings aren't the same. Anyway, the idea is that when you do have a consistent spacing, you can use this end. And the other end, you can use these ones instead. Now, what I did actually look for, which I didn't see in the catalogue, because um, I actually picked these from the Pomona catalogue, I was actually hoping to find one like this, but with a guard cable. So it's got a guarding on it as well, guard shield. Because that's something I use a lot of when I'm using my, my calibration gear stuff, you know. I use the guard terminal quite a lot to minimise noise. But this didn't seem to have an option for that. Maybe there is one which I just didn't notice, I don't know, but uh, you know, this one doesn't have the guard, but that's okay. Um, so as mentioned about 300 volt DC max and handheld is 30 volts AC max. 
So hands free use controlled environments, 300, 300 volts DC max. Now I have to admit, I've been using my other cables which are very similar to these, so the same kinds of things, at much higher than that. I've been using them up to 1000 volts because they're plugged into bits of test gear, not actually touching them and that sort of stuff and I've just been doing them. They've been fine, <laughs> but uh, I don't know, maybe this is a slightly different cable or something, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, there's a model number printed on there. So yeah, I've got two of those cables and stackable bananas in two ways, you can stack them sideways or you stack them back to back. So this is a standard Pomona plug which they use in a lot of things so um, these are nice ones because you lots of options for how you do things. Obviously these are also the same, stackable on the back or stackable on the side. But I really like these cables, so, so the ones I've got which I like this, right? These ones I've probably been using. I've got this short one, I've got some longer ones as well, which have got the guard terminals on them. I really like these cables. These are really convenient to use, nice and easy to use. They're not tangling up and that sort of stuff. Um, you see me use this quite a lot in my videos. So, um, yeah, but sometimes you just need ones with the split cables on you. So, the next thing I've got here is a 6553 oscilloscope probe tip adapter, which is this thing here. I've got one still in the original bag there. This is a 5mm adapter. Now, apparently, Pomona just discontinued it beginning of this year but you may still be able to find them out there um, stockers may have them still if you're lucky and what you do is you get your standard oscilloscope probe say 5mm, there's also 3mm tips as well I've got a couple of probes like that but this is a 5mm which is quite standard and then you can just slip that on and then actually you could actually do with it away with that one if you want you don't need it because it's got grounding from here and that gives you these two little flying leads I've actually used these kind of leads in the past when I've been doing diagnostics and troubleshooting on things on this test gear because then you can get down the sides of cars which are plugged into Biff's equipment we can't get one of these clips on because it's too bulky um, you've got different options, you can put different clips on so you can actually get some of these for example these are some HP clips original ones from, I don't know, maybe the 70s, I'm not sure, these are quite old but then you just push these on just down the connectors right, and then you can use little hook clips like this instead and you get into circuitry with that you know, if you want to hook onto a ground point somewhere else or something and you click onto that one and then this one here as well. Obviously it's going to increase your paths a little bit so you may pick up a bit more noise. Obviously your ground might be better but your main signal line may not be. It depends on what you're doing. Sometimes there's actually test point posts I'm working on test gear. Sometimes there is actually a post which I'd normally clip onto but if we've got these you may even be able to push this directly onto the post instead if there's post present. Sometimes that's a situation and that would actually mean even better paths. Then. You know you've only got a short distance in in most cases. I actually purchased a set of probes, 500 megahertz probes they were, I think they were, just because it came with these adapters, like this. So these are the ones I actually purchased because I wanted the adapters. These are actually 500 megahertz probes, CP3501R, so although it's, it's a competing comp company I suppose, but these are the probes you got with it, and say standard tips, 5 mil. but I got it because it came with these sorts of probes. There's adapters on there, you can probably see them in the bag there. So that's what came of that type. But these weren't cheap, right? These these are fairly expensive. But I all I really kind of wanted was these bits. That would have probably been good enough for what I wanted to do, but you know, high bandwidth probes are something that's always good. So I've got a 500 megahertz scope here, and it's, so really I do kind of need probes here anyway. But, but yes, yeah, so that's what those are for. It gives you the ability to get into bits of circuitry in between cards and bits of equipment, that sort of stuff. And we can't necessarily get in with one of these things where it's just too big and bulky. You know, you can't get this whole probe in there, but you could probably get this bit in there with a little bit of flying lead. Like I said, they've apparently been discontinued this year, so if you can find them, good on you. Um, but there probably are still some out there. So, the next thing we've got here is the 5940, which is a Kelvin clip test lead. Now, I've actually got a set of leads which I kind of I think I bought them Express and all that and they, they weren't great and I had to bodge them up to make them work and I didn't like them that much. Um, so what else do we have in here? Some spare O-rings and Kelvin clip leads and 0.65 meters gold plated Kelvin clips. Gold plated banana plugs. Apparently it's replacing for the HP 11059A if you know what those are. So what we have, it's a very nice length cable actually. This cable is one meter. 
thinking it is longer than that. <laughs> so we've got five plugs. So you got the basically your positive negative. You got your hmm, which one's which? Maybe it's not actually. Maybe it's using the black as a ground. Look, it's got a separate black. So that's using black as a shield. All right. So it's using white and blue, yellow and red as the pairs. As you can see from the actual clips at this end, this is what they've done. And obviously, then you've got a clip lead for the guard, I suppose. I'm guessing is that a, is that actually a shielded cable or is that independence? I'm just trying to see. No, it's independent cables, so each wire is independent, so there's no shielding on it, but it just happens to have one that passes through as well, which is interesting. Okay, so it's not actually shielded. So what these basically are, as you can see, is just a little spring clip, which is basically using O-rings as the spring, which is why they give you some spare ones. Obviously, because eventually they will break. It's an interesting setup. So basically what we've got is this nylon bushing or something here, it's probably nylon. Which just sits in there and holds them apart. And then these are what causes it to clamp, which means you can probably pull them open that way too. Yeah, you can. So it's an interesting design. This does actually have some little grips in there as well. Some ridges. Yeah, so it does have some little ridges in there. And there's that O-ring set up. So if you took those O-rings off... This will probably just fall apart. Simple design, that's actually effective. Okay. But what I'm not sure I like is the fact that it's not actually closing up all the way. These have been overformed, so those tips are not touching. And obviously, the further apart you go, the more of a problem it's going to be. Things are going to want to slip off. So I'm actually inclined to actually squeeze those up. Maybe put something between them, just have them very slightly open, like maybe, you know, maybe like that, and then squeeze these to flatten them out a little bit, make them more parallel. That's what I've been inclined to do. Got these nice gold plated ones. These are nice and tight, that's a good fit on there, so they've got a tight fit. Sometimes you get these, and these are just spinning loose, you know, they're, they're free for spinning, like if you get cheap ones from China, these will just spin freely on them. And that can cause you contact problems with contact resistance. And these are, you know, these are nice and snug, so those look fine. No problems there. Now this is the cable I'm actually trying to replace. Is this thing here, basically? So it's got these clips like this, which are curving leads, and they come together and touch there. And what I actually do, because these were sleeve connectors, and at the time. Well, there's been instances of things I want to plug these into, the sleeves aren't compatible. You have to cut the sleeves off, so you have an exposed connection. And these are okay. They're not super tight. I mean, that one's a little bit looser. That one's a bit tight, but this one's looser here. Um, they're okay. They're just a bit bodgy, I suppose. Because each of these pairs was black and red. They're both black and red, right? Which is wrong, because one cable goes to one clip. So they're actually coloured wrong, so I had to wrap them in tape so I knew which one was which. Because that was a bit of a bodge. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, that's why I did that. It's, I don't like this cable much. It works, it works fine, but no, it doesn't look great. So I wanted to get a nice Pomona cable instead. But the construction's quite interesting on these. It wasn't really expecting that sort of design to be relying on O-rings to act as a spring. I mean, what was the leakage across the O-rings? because they're full of carbon black to make them the colour. So there could be some leakage across the O-rings. Should it matter? Well, no, because it's the same connection anyway. So I don't think it would affect anything. I don't really see a problem with it, but it's just interesting construction. And the other problem is my existing lead is actually it's shorter than this one. Um, also not shielded. It means it doesn't quite reach my multimeter on my shelf here. So this one here will hang down this much. That's just about perfect. It means I can actually have this one I'm on a multimeter up here and not have it hanging in the air. So I can actually use the bench and clip on bits of gear and working on that sort of stuff as well. That'd be good. Happy with that. And the last things they sent me are these two cable hangers. Two different sizes. So this black one is the same as one I've already got up here behind me. And it's absolutely stuffed full. Every slot is full, completely right to the edge. And I needed some more. These are two different widths and two different slot counts. So this one here, let's get it out. 
so you can see it easily when it's not in the bag. So you've got a 4408 which is this size, and you've got a 1508 which has got more slots but the narrower. How wide are these slots? Let's have a look. So that slot there appears to be about 5mm, and this one is about 8mm. Yeah, about 8mm. Alright, so this one's got uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 slots. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 slots. So we've got 4 more slots on this one than we do on this one. More hanging space, which is great. So some of the cables I've got as well also a bit thin for my other one of these. So I actually 3D printed some, some hangers and stuff like that as well in the past, but not very strong. I've had them break and I had to reprint them a few times, that sort of stuff. Having to put on a cable too hard or something like that and it ends up breaking it. So I wanted to definitely get a decent one, and uh, these are definitely nice and robust. Nice metal construction. You know, that doesn't want to bend. This one here's the same, nice and stiff. Very robust. So now I've got much more cable hanging space, which is great, because I really needed it. So thank you very much Pomona for sending these to me, I really appreciate the support, these sorts of things, you know, you don't have to send them to me, and you do, and I really appreciate that. I just went through the catalogue and I emailed my contacts to say can I grab these items from you, and he arranged it, and it's great, so I really appreciate that support. I'm sort of mindful that if I had to buy all these it would have cost me a fair bit of money, and um, I'm really pleased that I've got some decent BNCs, some decent of these clip leads, these leads are really brilliant, I like these. And I'm glad I've got this type now, which has got the split end on one end. And obviously the scope probes, they'll be really handy for when I'm doing test gear repairs. And obviously the hanging space, brilliant. Check the links out down below for these items if you're interested. Um, I think I'll just be in like a generic link to the Pomona website. Uh, maybe to the catalogue as well, you can download the catalogue and look through it yourself and you can see what you can actually get. And um, yeah, so if you like, subscribe, catch you later.